So this week we're going to talk about animal adaptations in the rainforest. Um, and an adaptation is a change or the process of change by which an organism or a species becomes better suited to its environment. So animals have to adapt to wherever they live. Animals that live around us are adapted to this type of environment. In the rainforest, there's different types of climate, terrain, and other organisms they have to adapt around. So what is a biome? A biome is just a place in the world that has like similar characteristics. Um, so in the Peruvian rainforest, there's different kind of layers and different types of biomes. We have, um, you know, there are lush rainforests, like the two images here. Um, river, characterized by river, lots of rain, generally kind of warmish temperatures. And the animals have to adapt to these their surroundings. So first is bird adaptations. So what do birds do to adapt to their environment? One type is a macaw. Many people think these are parrots, but they're actually what we call macaws. On the left, we have a red or a blue and yellow macaw. On the right is a red and green. There's also something called a scarlet macaw. These pictures I took um, in a nature preserve, um, but macaws are special because they do kind of mate for life. They are a bonded pair. They have short hooked bills that you, they use to feed and help them climb. They have muscular tongues to eat different foods, and they're really bright. And both the male and the female in this type of bird are bright, whereas in some species, just the male is bright. Um, they do pair for life, like I said. They're very social, very intelligent, um, and they use their bills to crack open nuts. Um, they also do something special where they will use clay to help them um, digest their food. So you can see here there's um, three macaws. The rest of those are parrots. So you can see the difference between a macaw and a parrot. Um, but why do they eat the dirt? It's called geophagy. And clay is negatively charged, so it binds to different toxins in the guts in their body. Um, and then it helps them to digest the fruits that they eat. Um, this is called a clay lick. That's the area that they're called. And they all gather here and they eat clay, which helps them to digest their food. Here is a video so you can see the macaw beak in action. Then carefully gulp it. Or with that big anvil crack it. They're very intelligent birds. That's one of the reasons for their, you know, desirability. That is not a caw. Another adaptation for birds um, are their beaks. And this is a picture of a toucan. I was lucky to see this toucan. They are not always easy to find. But you can see how long the beak is. It's hiding behind that branch. But their beak is, you know, almost as big as their whole body. And this is an adaptation which, A, helps them eat. Um, but it also has become so big that it uh, helps them attract their mates. Um, unfortunately, sometimes adaptations that are, um, the, you know, that make the bird look so pretty and beautiful, it sometimes can have negative side effects. So for like the toucan, it sometimes makes it hard for it to fly because the beak is so heavy. So you can actually kind of tell if it's a toucan flying because their beak and their head are pointed a little bit more downward that beak is so heavy. Um, birds in general, the males often take on that bright and uh, colors and plumage or feathers, um, or they have just unique feathers. So on the left there, you have a blue crowned mot mot, and you can see it has some really bright blue pretty colors, but it has this long, beautiful tail. Um, and on the right, this is the national bird of Peru, it has a funny orange feathery head. Um, so those are both adaptations to make them look desirable. Some more interesting birds. Um, we have the crested quetzal on the left, and those are found in what's called the cloud forest of Peru. It's a little bit above the rainforest. The one in the middle is a harpy eagle. It's the largest bird of prey in the world. It's about a meter tall. It's huge. Um, it eats monkeys and sloths, so it has a big diet. And the Hotson, um, he's a funny bird. He's got like fun hairs on top of his head. Um, they're also called the stinky bird um, because their gut is full of bacteria that helps them digest uh, aquatic vegetation, so plants that are in the water, and it's stinky because it's fermenting that to help it. The young Hoatsins also have claws on their wings, which is a really weird adaptation um, that helps them probably, you know, survive and not get eaten as a baby. Um, some more adaptations, you have webbed feet. So these two types of birds, the Orinoco goose and the horned screamer, have webbed feet for swimming. That's an adaptation for birds, uh, many types of birds. Um, though they also both mate for life, just like I said with the macaws. So that is an adaptation. 
Um, and all birds develop their own unique call with different frequencies, different levels, different sounds. You've heard birds around here, but in the rainforest, the, the effect is tenfold. There's so many different species of birds, and they're all trying to make their mark in the, um, like the soundscape of the rainforest. So this horned screamer bird is named for its funny call, which I will play for you now. So that is a really unique call, um, special to that bird. And if you hear that, then you know that's what that bird is. Um, another bird, um, while not very pretty looking, it kind of hides. It's very camouflage, um, called a tinamou. These are ground-dwelling birds. Uh, they don't really fly that often, and they're really hard to see. But they're really a uh, characteristic. Their sound is a characteristic of the rainforest. You hear it literally all the time. So like when we are walking through the jungle, all you could hear is birds chirping, and you can always hear a tinamou. Here is the video of the tinamou. So that is the sound of the tinamou, an undulated tinamou. Um, and they're found not in the still rainforest, but South America in general. So those are some bird examples. The next um, is plant adaptations. So even though they are um, growing, you know, on their own in the jungles, they're competing for not only soil, they're competing for light. It's a really dense place for plants to grow. So this is um, what we call a giant kapok tree. They can grow really, really, really tall. They're one of the tallest trees in the rainforest, so reaching that top amount of light. But they grow these giant roots called buttress roots. So you can see how big these roots are um, that give the tree stability. By This was one of our guides. Um, you can see him standing in front of a root. And then this is me standing on one of the roots of a giant kapok tree. So the reason that the roots grow more outward rather than down completely, like our trees, into the ground, is because even though the rainforest is really has a lot of great nutrients, the soil itself is thin and very nutrient poor because it's always raining. So those nutrients are always getting washed away. So there's actually not a huge um, layer of soil. So plants have to develop different ways to hold on tight to those soils. Um, another example of this is what we call a walking palm or the Socratea. And there's me um, standing in front of it. So the tree goes up a lot further. It is a type of palm tree. Um, and all of these are its, um, I wouldn't, they're like part of the root, I guess. They extend down and they help the tree sort of walk towards wherever the light is. So it helps the tree move towards the sun and it helps stabilize the plant into the soil as well. Another adaptation for plants is. Um, to help protect a plant, the new shoots of the plant sometimes are red, and that just helps differently. It helps um, like absorb light differently, so the newer shoots will survive that better. Another plant adaptation is something called a bromeliad. It's a plant that is called an epiphyte, and it basically only grows on other plants. So it will exist on trees um, mostly, and it, if you can see this one, this is a great picture that I took, because that entire tree is covered with epiphytes, which are plants that grow on other plants, and bromeliads, which is a, type, a special type of those. Um, what's cool about a bromeliad, too, is that inside a bromeliad, it catches a lot of water, so there's it's kind of its own little e ecosystem inside a bromeliad, and some animals even like solely rely on bromeliads for food sources. So they're a really key part of the rainforest. Um, and what's cool about it, it shows you that in the rainforest, every inch of the rainforest is used for something. Um, there's competition for every little niche in that rainforest. So that is um, bird adaptations and cool plant adaptations from Manu Rainforest in Peru.